What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video I'm going to take you through some MFT table accessories. These particular ones are by UJK by Axminster Tools in the UK. Some of the power products are here. You'll have seen me use some of the power products before. I actually did this table using the UJK power guide system. I've been using these in a few projects and you'll have seen me use some of these items in uh, some of my previous videos as well. So I said I'd take you through them. You guys might be in the market for some MFT accessories and these might be exactly what you need. Now, full disclosure, as always, I was sent these by Axminster. I didn't pay for myself. I have to tell you guys that up front so you guys understand that. And uh, yeah, once we understand that, we are good to go. So we'll keep it nice and short and sweet. We have some bench stocks to look at, some clips, uh, accessories for the rail. We have the UJK fence to check out and the UJK um, MFT clamp as well. So without further ado, let's just jump in and do it. Okay, very first thing we want to start with, and this is a nice and simple little product. These are the rail clips by UJK. And these are to clip onto your bench dogs and hold the track tightly against the bench dogs. So they will work with the Festival track and the Makita track, uh, the tracks with the T-track on top, just like this. Very, very simple to use. It's just a case of slide them in into the track. It's a good, strong uh, clip. It's a good strong spring in this and it really holds the track tight against the dogs. Now, it's a really elegant and simple solution. Um, it's nice and easy to use and set up. And one thing I do actually quite like about this is the fact that I can slide my rail forwards and backwards and these clips will stay against the dog. So you can make adjustments to your rail like this, which I found very, very handy. Another thing as well is they're kind of hinged so I can lift up my rail, take my piece out of the way, drop it in, line up my measurements, see where I am, and I can drop my rail back down again and it's holding everything in place. And like I said, they're good and strong and it really does keep them well held against the side of uh, those dogs. So nice and simple, little elegant solution. That's the first little product. And again, the big thing I like about it is the fact that I can adjust my guide rail forwards and backwards without having to take anything on or off the table. So that's the very first little product um, done. And like I said, I've been really enjoying using this and the fact that you can adjust it forward and backwards is really nice. Again, a simple little elegant solution for the first tool and Makita rails. Now, the next thing I wanna show you guys is this bench dog. This is the super dog. So this has a few tricks up its sleeve. So let me get you in again for a closer look and I'll show you exactly how you use this and uh, all the little things it can do. Okay, so very quickly, let me take you to the UJK Power Super Dog. And straight away, you can see that this is not your ordinary bench dog. If I put it up beside a UJK Power Tall Dog, you can see there's a slight bit of difference. One, it's a good bit taller. Two, you have two uh, orange O-rings here, and you also have this knob section on top. Now, it does a couple of different tricks. This is how it comes in the box. You'll also get the uh, collar or the 25 mil bush and you get two spare O-rings. I'll show you what that's for now in a second. But this is your standard configuration with the chamfer collar in place. Now, with this MFT top, or doing it with the power guide system, you can also get this uh, UJK a little chamfer tool. It puts a small chamfer around the hole in the top of the MFT table, and that will sit down into it, just like the other dogs like that. And that gives you a register in the top of your MFT table. It also makes it, uh, gives extra stability to the dog and ensures that you're sitting at 90 degrees in that hole. Now, the nice thing about the uh, super dog is if I twist this knob here, it compresses the whole dog. It compresses the two O-rings and they essentially swell out in that hole. So unlike a standard dog where you can just pull it in and out, this is now locked in there. And when I mean locked in there, I can literally lift up my whole uh, MFT top and that's not coming out. So it really gets a good solid grip and it's securely registered in there. And to take it back out, it's just a case of loosen this guy and out it comes. So it's a nice way of locking the dog on for that extra stability. And it can all be done from above the table rather than having to do anything below the table. Now, there is a second configuration to this. It's nice and simple. So it's a case of just twist the uh, top knob that pulls a bolt out of the center of this and it's all really nicely engineered pieces, it fits together quite nicely. So just need to take off the chamfer ring, pop on the 25 mil uh, bush and it all just goes back together the exact same way. So that sits in there just like that, tighten that down 
and uh, just make sure my o-rings are lining up and they are indeed so there we go now that will sit in there just like that now this is the way the old dogs used to be they would have a um a bush around the end of them like that and that would be your register into your table that would make sure the dog was sitting at 90 degrees and it would also give the dog extra stability it's kind of like a foot really on the end of the dog now so the whole point of that is so you can use these now in conjunction with your older dogs if your dogs still had a 25 mil bush around the end of them not like these dogs with the chamfer you can use it that way as well now it's also long enough to be shoved from the underneath of your bench through, I can't get out of my bench because my bench is extra thick and I don't have access to underneath it. I don't need access to underneath my bench, but you can actually use this as a low profile dog as well by putting it through the end of the bench, tightening it up and it will stay there as a low profile dog. Very quickly, there's a close up of the super dogs. You can see the knob on top, there's your two O-rings and there is the chamfer ring and you can see the angle is to this side so when you reassemble this you want to make sure that you have it, that chamfer facing towards the bottom of the dog so it actually sits in that hole because the top side here is actually flat and your chamfered angle hopefully it's coming out on camera is to the bottom side so you keep that when you re when you reassemble it just keep that to the bottom side okay so that's a quick look at the ujk power super dog now where i've been using them is i have another two here so i use them to hold on my track now with the ujk clamps so i can lock these guys in place my track stays there these dogs now do not move they don't pull out i can pull on off my track i can pull on these clips hit my track do whatever those dogs won't budge they're locked in place and like i say my track is ready to be set up there now so it's nice to be able to use the two dogs that hold on your track to really be able to lock them down onto the bench um, it's nice the dogs that you want to be able to pull in and out and reposition everywhere are the ones that you're putting your material against so it's nice to have the super dogs that lock down like i say to hold on that track now one thing i should point out is there was a third configuration with these dogs originally which doesn't seem to be in the pack anymore and that was a flush collar so that the dog could slip all the way through the table so you could lower the height of these uh, if you wanted to lower the height of the back dog you could do but the problem with that is you couldn't guarantee that they were sitting at 90 degrees so i'm wondering is that the reason why they don't offer that anymore because in the instructions that come with it, it says there's three configurations and then you just have one and two here. So they never changed the wording, but I do know there was a flush um, collar that used to sit on these dogs as well, but they don't come with that anymore. That's just one thing I wanted to point out. But yeah, a very nice dog indeed, and it's nice bit to lock them solidly onto the bench. And they also work really well with the UJK fence, which is what we're going to take a look at next. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is the UJK fence. This is a really nicely machined piece of anodized aluminum, is what I believe this is. So it's 600 millimeters in length, it's 40 millimeters in width, and it's 10 millimeters in thickness. And you can see you have your spacing, your 32 mil spacing for your holes here that match up to your MFT table. To this side, you have an off-centered hole. I'll show you that for now in a minute. And these holes to this side are slightly elongated. So it has to take any discrepancy in your top out of it. So you can guarantee that you will get your dogs to sit down into this. But uh, yeah, I'll show you what that's funny in a second. It's Like I said, it's a really nice precision piece and uh, it's good and solid. So I'll give you a close up of it. I'll show you what comes with it. And then I'll show you this in operation. Okay, very quickly, let's look at the UJK fence to work with the uh, MFT top. So you can go, you see a really nice piece of anodized aluminum and it's really nicely machined. So we have our holes with our 32 mil spacing to this side. These are perfect 20 mil holes. We have our hole that's off center, centered around here somewhere. Uh, this is so we can set it up at an angle of 45 degrees, which I'll show you in a second. And then we have our elongated holes to this side. So this is the, new, the newer version. It's slightly different to the older version that had three or another four holes in the, in the middle and it didn't have elongated holes to the side. It just had the perfect 20 mil holes uh, all through it. So this one is slightly different. And like I said, this is a slightly newer version. So in order to put this down, it's nice and simple. It comes with the two flush dogs with an eight mil uh, threaded hole the whole way through them. So you just pop them down into the table, just like that. Locks everything in place. You also get the stop, which is quite nice. So a repeat stop, we can put our pieces up against this and do repeat cuts at set distances. So that guy slides up and down, just in case I lock it down then with the Bristol handle and uh, you have a repeat cut stop. Now, like I said, it also works well with the Super Dog. Super Dog with a nice long base on it. That sits down into it and you can lock it in place too, which is nice. Um, 
you can also fit accessories to these threaded holes. So here is the UJK clamp. And you can see that has the exact same dog on the end of it with a eight mil Allen bolt through it. So I can sit that guy down into that as well. And I can use this for clamping my work pieces and I can bolt this from underneath so that it uh, doesn't pull out of the table when I'm clamping stuff down. So I can actually just fit that to either the two of these also, which is nice. So there we go, that's just a quick look at the close up of the fence. Now let me show you it in action. And before we move away, there's one thing I should point out. It is unbelievably difficult to get this thing back out of the table. Um, it's quite hard indeed. You really want to be able to get it from underneath and pop these dogs. But if you work your fingers along it like this, that's the nice and easy way to do it. It would be nice if they supplied it with this little guy here. He comes with the clamp for locking the clamp underneath the table. This is the uh, UJK uh, thumb or nut bolt knob, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a, you can see the eight mil thread on it there. But you could thread them into that guy, pull them out. It's just a nice way of removing this from the table. And only for I have the clamp, I wouldn't be able to do this. So it'd be nice if they provided this in the set so you guys could get this out of the table. That's my only criticism. So let's see it in action. Okay, very quickly, let me get this set up just to give you a quick idea of why a fence is so nice. Well, first off, you have a nice big long straight edge to reference off rather than the dogs, and it really helps when you're doing smaller pieces. So my curve of my track saw runs around here when I've set up my festival rail. So I can run this out pretty close to where my curf is, which is right there. That's where I'm gonna set it up. So I'll just drop the dogs through just like that. Now I know I'm at perfect 90 degrees to these two dogs. Take my clips, clip it on and I'm ready to go. So I can take nice small pieces like this, lift up my track, you can see uh, it's right just in from the edge of my track. So it's nice, I can reference this the whole way out. I can take really small fine cuts or I can take a really small piece. I can take it all the way out to here. And you can see that's where my last dog would be. It would be in the way of my track. So if I come out past that, now there would be no support for this piece if um, there was a dog here. You can see I'm past that dog now. So it wouldn't actually be supported. It would be in between two of the holes. So it's nice to have a fence there. I can put that down. If Again, if it was a nice, really sharp piece and I couldn't support it with a dog on this side either, I have the fence there now and it's no problem just to run a cut straight over out with my track saw and you can do really fine pieces. Works just as well with larger stuff. Again, slot that in there. I can take a measurement, set it up. If I want to do repeat cuts at that distance, no problem, just set in my stop, put everything up against my stop and I'm good to go. Now, it would be really nice, I would say, to have a second one of these, another one on this side and you could run your track saw through the middle of the two of them, that would be a really nice setup. You could also set them up to use at 90 degrees. You can also take this and uh, use it across pieces, which I shall set up and show you now. Okay, so just to quickly illustrate some of the other stuff you can do with this. I won't cover it all in this video. There's loads you can do with these uh, fences. So piece of MDF, let's say I wanted to route a load of dados in this, or I want to set up a load of biscuits or dominoes or dowels. Not a problem. Set that guy up there. This can sit over the top of my workpiece, just like that. And now I can run my router here. So it's a guide for my router. I can put my biscuit jointer up against it, a dowel or, or domino. You can get all that stuff into your cabinetry work, set up all your stops and away you go. Now you can see how this would be nice to have two of these. You could put this over the top of another fence that you have running at 90 degrees to it. That would support your work all the way along as you run underneath this. So it'd be quite handy. Now the only thing that's not so great about it, I have to say, is that the piece itself is 600 millimeters long rather than from end hole to end hole being 600 millimeters. So for you guys doing cabinetry and kitchen work, um, all your cabinets are gonna be 600 millimeters. So you need them to fit in between those two dogs, which is a bit of a disadvantage. I do, however, know that UJK have a bigger fence on the way. It's in design and in production, I've been told. So don't worry for you, all you cabinet guys, kitchen guys out there who are dealing with 600 millimeter thick stuff. There is a larger fence on the way. I'll just give you just a quick idea. Like I said, it's handy for a guide for a router, a biscuit joint or a dowler. Uh, you can go across things, set things up that way. 
two fences to get our, you could set things up at 90 degrees. There's loads of different things you can do with this. Um, the sky's the limit. And uh, like I said, a bit of engineering and a bit of imagination. And there's loads of ways you can set up your work to knock stuff out. So yeah, there you go. That's just a quick look at it. Now, like I said, it, you can also set this up at 45 degrees. So I'll just give you guys a quick look at that now. So between this hole here and this hole, this why this hole is off center. If I take just very, very quickly, take out these two super dogs, drop that guy in there, pop him out, and drop him in there. And now I'm set up at a 45 degree angle in my MFT table between this hole and the hole that's off centered. Right, so there we go, that was the UJK fence for the MFT table. And like I said, there's a bigger version of this on the way. That's kind of the newer version of the 600 millimeter one I just showed you there. And it's just a brief run through. There's loads you can do with it, loads of different ways you set it, can set it up. And like I say, having two of them working in tandem would really unlock the potential of these things. And uh, once you get your MFT table set up, you will be amazed what you can actually do on it and how fast you can do it. Um, there's, there's days in this workshop where I don't use my miter saw anymore once my MFT table is set up. So I have that fence now kind of permanently set up there. So for all my small cross cuts, I can just have it set up here on my uh, track saw and just run it through it. And uh, I'm, I'm just here the whole time. I'm not going over and back to my miter saw. So you can do almost everything you can do on a miter saw on this table and everything you can do on a table saw almost when your MFT table is set up as well. So it's a great option for any of you guys out there who has a small workshop, maybe you hobbyists, uh, what you're wondering whether or what, where you should spend your money. Should I buy a table saw? Should I buy a miter saw? Should I get a track saw? I'd advise you all maybe to start with a track saw and a nice MFT setup. And then if you feel like you need a table saw or feel like if you need a big miter saw, then you can invest in those. But you can absolutely do everything that those machines can do with this setup. Now, you're not gonna do it as well or as quick in some instances. Some instances, the table saw will just be superior. That's just how it is. And some instances, the miter saw will just be superior. Again, that's just how it is, but you can kind of do everything on an MFT table with a track saw. So I guess that's the point on once it's set up nicely. Now, last thing to look at is the UJK clamp that I have here that works with the MFT table. Uh, this has been great. It's really nice for locking the work against the fence and stuff, but there is a slight little issue I have with it, which I shall show you guys now. And uh, other than that, it's been a great little tool and a great addition to my MFT table. Okay guys, so very quickly, this is just a UJ a clamp from UJK, uh, again from the guys in Axminster, they actually own UJK and they make all the UJK stuff. So again, very simple, you, go, you know these kind of clamps guys, uh, they just lock things onto tables. Again, like I said already, it comes with the dog, very same dog that goes into this, sits into your MFT table and you can clamp your work in and you can actually use it through this fence as well, which is nice. So slide your piece up against your fence, Lock it in place. Now you can also, this screw also comes with it, the kind of thumb screw um, with the eight mil thread. So you can lock this guy onto the workbench if you wish. I haven't done that yet and I haven't felt the need to do it. It gets a good enough clamping force without actually locking it on. That's held in place against the fence. Now, what's the little issue I have with it? Well, this is it. Let me show you. The distance between the head of the clamp and the dog is the exact width of the spacing of the holes. Now, why is that an issue? Well, let me show you. So if I set that back up exactly where it was, right there. Now, let's say I wanna cut my piece here and it is more than a hole's width away from my uh, clamp. I can now not clamp my piece. I also, because I have an overhang here, I can't set that up there on my piece, because I can mar the edge of my piece. So if it's there, you can see it can't reach it. Now it also can't reach it from here. It can't reach it from here. It can't reach it from here. Uh, I don't have a hole anywhere spare here on my fence to clamp it. And uh, I can't clamp it from this side either. So it doesn't happen all the time. It's a rare occasion where you end up more than one hole away from all the holes around it, if you see what I'm saying, in this square. And you can't actually reach your piece with the clamp. So it would be nice if they just made it a little bit longer, that distance there between the dog hole, the dog itself, I should say, and the clamp head itself. If that was a little bit wider than the space, this 96 millimeter spacing, then you wouldn't ever run into this issue. I have run into it a couple of times and I've just noticed and I thought, well, that's a bit strange. Uh, but again, it's a kind of a rare one. Usually 
the material is somewhere around there and you can always get to it with one of the holes around it and clamp it in place but it's just a little thing I've noticed I said I'd point it out to you guys but other than that it's a great little clamp and a great accessory for holding anything to the top of your MFT top okay guys so there we go that's just some ujk products accessories to use with your mft top hopefully you've enjoyed that video hopefully you've got something out of it and uh, hopefully this helps you guys out as well now if you're in the uk uh, axminster is where you get all the ujk stuff if you're in ireland then the carpentry store up in nice those guys are in partnership with axminster they do all the axminster stuff and they also have the full stock of uh, ujk products up there so all the guys that are watching this if you're in ireland you will get all the ujk uh, stuff from the carpentry store i'll link to the carpentry store below i'll also link to the axminster website again they sent me this stuff I didn't pay for it myself, so as long as you guys understand that, uh, it's happy days. And I really like using it so far, I have no real complaints with it whatsoever. Again, if the fence was a little bit longer, which it's going to be, they are making a bigger fence. If the clamp head was a little bit longer, that's my only gripe there. I really like the super dogs, you can lock them onto the table. They've now become a permanent part of my table for uh, locking on my track. And that fence is now also a permanent part of my MFT top as well. It's just so handy to have a nice fence like that put your piece against and you can also set up a stop for a peak cuts it's again like it's happy days I'm less time over the motor saw than I am at my MFT table and I'm amazed at the fact that this track saw now has become the most used power tool in my workshop believe it or not never thought that would be the case but it absolutely is the case once an MFT table uh, gets a nice setup so that's it guys I'm going to get out of here now don't forget to give the video a thumbs up uh, comments and questions below I get back to everybody uh, if I can and uh, as always guys your support is very much appreciated I appreciate all the likes all the comments all the interaction and a big thanks as always to the guys over on Patreon who continue to support the channel that is very much appreciated so that's it guys it's getting quite late now I'm going to get out of here I'll see you in the next one